How many ways can you select a dozen donuts from a donut shop that has 10 varieties? For example, you could select three each of four varieties or four each of three varieties. You could select six each of two varieties or two each of six varieties. You could even select one of each variety and double up on two of them as we have here. These types of distributions are definitely unordered selections, but how do they differ from the unordered selections that we've considered before, unordered selections of an end set? Can we use any of our existing counting techniques to count the number of donut distributions from a dozen donuts into 10 varieties? Let's revisit what we know about counting ordered lists and unordered sets with and without repetition. In previous videos, we've learned how to count various objects that can be built from a collection of size n. Let's revisit these ideas by working an example where we figure out how many ways to pick two donuts from three types of donuts. If the order of the donuts matter, say if there are two people picking the donuts, and we are not allowed to use one donut twice, then we count using p and k, the number of ordered lists of length k from an n set. We see here that person one gets to pick a donut, and then person two gets to pick a donut but can't repeat. So in this case, there are six ways. Now let's consider the same scenario where there are two people, but they can each pick the same donut if they like. In this case, there are n to the k ordered lists of length k with an n set, so we're allowing repetition. So in this situation, person one and person two select their donuts, but this time we allow overlaps. For instance, they could both have a chocolate or both have a strawberry. There are nine ways, or three squared ways, for this to happen. The last situation arises when a single person selects two donuts without repetition. So they're selecting two donuts from three total types. In this case, we use three choose two or n choose k, and we see that there are three unordered selections of donuts. But this raises another question. Couldn't one person want two donuts of the same type, say two chocolates or two strawberries? How can we count how many ways there are for one person to select two donuts if they might be allowed to have two of the same type of donut. The more general version of this question is how many unordered selections are there of size k from an n set where we allow repetition. So the interpretation of the original problem was that we wanted k equals 12 donuts from a collection of n equals 10 types of donuts and we wanted to allow repetition. Let's see this in action with our example of k equals two donuts from n equals three types, where we do allow repetition. In this case, we can have two chocolate, two strawberry, or two vanilla, along with the three subsets that we had seen before. So in this case, there are six unordered selections of two donuts from three types, where we allow repetition. So let's get the idea of how we can even go about finding the number of unordered selections from an end set where repetition is allowed. Let's investigate this by thinking about how to select k equals 12 donuts from n equals 5 different varieties. Imagine we start with 12 plain donuts like this. The trick comes from realizing that we can place 4 dividers to create 5 categories. So when we place the 4 dividers like this, we see the 5 categories correspond to chocolate, strawberry, lemon, vanilla, and blueberry donuts. Let's see another example where we think of 12 plain donuts, place our 4 dividers, and then fill in based on the categories that they live in. We could imagine that we even have three dividers all the way to the left and one divider in the middle, and that produces two types of donuts, vanilla and blueberry. Or we could place all of the dividers to the right side, and that corresponds to having 12 chocolate donuts like this. Thus, we have seen that every arrangement of donuts that we might be interested in comes from taking 12 plain donuts and placing four dividers like this. But as we watch this happen, we notice that the donuts can be replaced by zeros and the dividers can be placed by ones. And now we're just looking at a binary string of a certain length with a certain number of ones. So for example, in our previous lists, we can take all the donuts and replace them with zeros and all the dividers and place them with ones. But this is great because we already know how to count the number of binary strings with a fixed number of ones. So in this example, we just need to know how many binary strings there are with 12 zeros and four ones. We call this process the process of donuts and dividers, though it is more famously known as stars and bars or bars and stars. As we have just seen, the number of unordered selections of size k from n types of objects is k plus n minus one choose n minus one. We can think of this as 
dividing a list of k-identical objects into n boxes using n-1 dividers. The objects and dividers correspond to zeros and ones in a binary string of length k plus n minus 1, so we can simply select n minus 1 positions in a binary string of length k plus n minus 1, giving us our formula. Let's see another example. Suppose we have six people and they want to split up nine $1 bills. We can imagine the nine identical $1 bills pictured here, and since we're splitting it among six people, we need to place five dividers like this. To the left of the first divider goes to person 1, then person 2, person 3, person 4, person 5, and person 6. We're selecting k equals 9 objects from n equals 6 types, so there is n plus 6 minus 1, choose 6 minus 1, or 14 choose 5 such ways to divide up 9 $1 bills to 6 people. Let's see two more related examples. Let's figure out how many non-negative integer solutions there are to the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 15. We can imagine there being a list of 15 1 tokens, and we place three dividers so that it creates four boxes for x1, x2, x3, and x4. Therefore, we're selecting k equals 15 objects from n equals 4 types, which we know is 15 plus 4 minus 1 choose 4 minus 1, or 18 choose 3 total ways. Let's consider a related question. How many? positive integer solutions are there to this equation. Again, we can think of placing 11 1 tokens, but this time because we want positive solutions, we need to give each variable 1 token to start, like this. This leaves us with 6 remaining tokens, and we have 5 boxes to place it in, so we put 4 dividers down. Notice in the example that we have here, x5 gets no remaining tokens, but that's okay because we've already given them 1. This problem means we're selecting k equals 6 objects from n equals 5 types, so we have 10 choose 4 such ways. Let's finish this video by following up about counting with and without repetition. We'll organize our data so that we have strategies going forward. Let's build a table that organizes the data about picking k objects from n. Along the top, we can consider arrangement, which are ordered objects or distribution of distinct objects, or a selection, which is unordered, or a distribution of identical objects. And on the left, we consider no repetition or unlimited repetition. For the upper left box, there are p and k ways to select k objects from n, where we arrange them and we don't allow repetition. In the upper right box, there are n choose k ways to select k objects from n, where we don't worry about order and we don't allow repetition. In the bottom left box, there are n to the k ways to select an ordered arrangement where we allow unlimited repetition. This is because we use the product rule, and we have k stages where we have n choices at each stage. The final entry in this table comes from today's video, where we see there are k plus n minus 1 choose n minus 1 ways to select k objects in an unordered fashion from a collection of n objects where we allow as much repetition as we need. Can you think of a question that would utilize each category for its answer? And can you think? of any other categories that might be missing from this table? For instance, what if we allow some repetition but not unlimited repetition?